So, so we're what? Me and there's all these egos. Wait, um, Rudy, your time. I, I'll listen to your Miami Heat lineup. Uh, I can't be better than mine. <laughs> it just can't. Well, if, if, um, <laughs> my team um, is uh, starting off at point guard with uh, Tim Hardaway. He was All NBA first team in 1997. He was top shelf as our he's our the best point guard the Heat's ever had, uh, and um, was a killer in late game situations. Never afraid of the shot, uh, never afraid to take the shot, and, and I want a guy who's never afraid. And you know, a lot of guys are afraid to take that shot when it's they're not afraid in the first quarter, but in the fourth quarter with the time running out, their ass is. Sh- Tighten up, <laughs> and they don't want that shot. Timmy always wanted that shot. My shooting guard, obviously, is going to be Dwayne Wade, um, who at one point was, whether people like it or not, was the best player in the world uh, for about two, a year and a half, to about two years, definitely two years. Um, after winning the finals, he was the best player in the world, better than Kobe, better than LeBron. He was the best in the world. And then, and then unfortunately, uh, after 08, his knees uh, – Gave out on him, and they, you know, he started to have his decline. He led the league in scoring. Was that in 09? 09. 09. 08, 09, yeah. Um, you know, but then his knees just started getting bad, unfortunately. If, if Dwayne Wade had not had bad knees, Dwayne Wade probably could have, you know, been a 35,000-point score, potentially. Um, my small forward is Jimmy Butler. Uh, Jimmy Butler is a dog, and he does not need to shoot to win. In fact, he doesn't look to shoot. Tonight was indicative of that against the Mavericks, where he just didn't want to shoot, and uh, which was very disappointing because because he didn't shoot is probably why we lost the game. He likes to trust his teammates, which is appreciated appreciated, but to an extent where I, I'd rather you take those shots, you know, in the, later in the game. But uh, you know, for a team like this, he's a defensive dog. He is tough as hell. He is a great playmaker, and. Uh, yeah, he's that dude. And if we get a version of him like the Milwaukee Bucks series, he's probably the best player in the world. Because in that series, he was the best player in the world. LeBron James is my power forward. Even though he can't guard a real Only power David forward. Um, eh, oh, God good. almighty. Even though he can't guard a real power forward, is a lot, he can't guard Tim Duncan either. Even though, and I, and I, when I say guard, I don't mean a possession. I'm going to repeat that. I don't I, mean I, when someone says someone can guard I, one I, through five. If you, I think LeBron can guard a I point guard all game. Yago. Listen, what I'm saying. Okay, I think LeBron can guard a point guard all game. I think LeBron can guard a shooting guard all game. I think LeBron can guard a small forward all game. I do the, the, this whole concept that he can guard one through five. It is cute. It's sweet. But the reality is, could he guard a possession here and there? Absolutely. Can he guard a center all game? No, he'd foul out. Could he guard a power forward all game in the post? Maybe in today's NBA, he can because they're standing 24 feet from the rim. But in real NBA, where power forwards were powerful and tough and not a bunch of fucking 6'10", 205-pound pussies, yeah, he couldn't guard those guys, like, on a consistent basis. He would get He would be in foul trouble. But he'd be my power forward. Um, the season he had in uh, 12, 13, was it 13, where he shot 56 plus percent? It's the best, that's the best season he's ever had. People can sit here and say, you know, I've heard people say his he had a season in Cleveland that was better. Hell no. The two seasons he had in Miami, 11, 12, 12, 13, were the best two seasons of his life. That 13 season to shoot 56 and a half percent from the field, like that's ridiculous for a, for a, for a small forward. It's ridiculous. And he was dominating games out yeah. of the post. He didn't have like, this new version. I get, I don't know why the Lakers don't oh, use him in the God. post. Quite frankly, I I I don't get it. You want to have him? You want to have him? Um, you know, shooting threes occasionally, fine. But to, the, I don't know why at thirty nine they have him outside playing twenty seven feet from the rim. It just doesn't his, make a lot of sense to me. Of, you remember his turn and face game? It was just and yeah, it was, was just, great. It was oh, it was ridiculous. Goodness. It was incredible. Like I, I mean, and you, you know, I'm not. I, you know, I don't like him, you know, personally, but I respect his game. His game's incredible, and I don't know him personally. I don't like him, his persona. <laughs> let's let's fix that because maybe if I knew him personally, I would. I, I don't know because the way he, n- n- his narrative publicly with trying to manipulate it all the time, I can't stand that because I don't see any other players do that stuff, and I hate that stuff. 
Um, the one place he didn't really do that was in Miami, believe it or not, because he was hated in Miami. And that's the funny thing. The four years in Miami, he was the most despised player in basketball. Would you disagree? No, that's true. I mean, it, it kind of grew. Yeah. It kind of changed after. The first year, he was absolutely yeah. hated. And we ate, and as fans, we ate his hate. And we defended yeah. this guy all the time. And then he goes back to Cleveland, and he's the most loved guy on the planet again. <laughs> goes to the Lakers, love like crazy. Comes to Miami, he's absolutely no. hated. It's crazy. And my center would be Alonzo Mourning. Alonzo Mourning would not need to touch the ball offensively. He's the one of the greatest defensive centers of all time. Block shots, defend, rebound, all that stuff. And, yeah, I mean, he could get a, a, a clunky-looking hook shot where he's, like, banging like he's punching the air to throw a hook up in the air. Um, but uh, Alonzo Mourning would absolutely be, absolutely be my center. Off my bench, uh, Shaq would be my backup center. And, yeah, he'd hate coming off the bench, but for the similar reasons, like, he clogs the lane. So, he had – if like, there's a reason. It, LeBron could not function with no, a guy like was, Shaq, who is, no, is okay. young Shaq. No, young Shaq, young Shaq, not even the Lakers Shaq, Orlando we'd have Shaq. Because, huh? Game plan. Like, no. Yeah, or, Orlando Shaq, he was athletic and moved. Lakers Shaq, he was 400 pounds. Like, he was massive. And he just stood in the paint pretty much five, four to five feet from the rim. Um, and if LeBron's game is based on drive and kick and drive to the basket, there's nowhere to drive to if they have a 400-pound dude in the middle of the lane. Um, my, I have a Chris Bosh who can double up as a small forward, power forward. I mean, when he got to Miami, he was a post player, and he had a great 15, 17-foot mid-range game. Because of how LeBron plays, Chris Bosh became a three-point shooter. Standing in the corner, um, his three-point shot, you know, improved exponentially while he was here, which is part of the problem with today's game is all these guys want to shoot threes when they're seven feet tall. His three-point shooting saved us against the Celtics in in Indiana. Dude, I mean, no, he was huge. I mean, he he, all of a sudden he was shooting threes for the corner. I mean, no, he 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 was great. I mean, I think I think Bosch was very underrated and. Um, un- un- unfortunately, he had the blood clots because I, I, I believe that if Chris Bosh does not have those blood clots in his legs, Miami beats Cleveland in the playoffs. Miami with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh yes. beats LeBron in and the yeah. playoffs because LeBron was pe- LeBron once he left Miami and went he could yeah, not win down us. here. He could he, there was a problem against the Heat. It was a mental thing against the Heat, and if he. You know, yeah, we you lost know? to the Raptors. I think it was in. No one else. What? The way Wade got up for what? LeBron, like no. Damn, of he course he did. LeBron and got up for Kobe. Uh, of course he did, and and I mean, and people, you know, I think LeBron had one or two more wins over Wade in this head to head. Well, again, they're not head to head. He's six three, and LeBron six eight, six nine. They're not guarding each other realistically. Um, but D Wade, I mean, there was actually a thing on the OGs with uh, a podcast with uh, Udonis Sazel and Mike Miller that. Dwayne Wade and LeBron played one on one, and Dwayne Wade beat him. You know when they were in Miami, Dwayne Wade beat him. That and Udonis has him said it. He says LeBron's the best player I've ever played with, but one on one, Dwayne Wade beat LeBron. Which is, I can see it. <laughs> I can absolutely see it. You know, so because one on one's different. <laughs> you know, it's a different type of game. Now, um, Bosch was uh, Bosch. If he had been healthy, and I, I would have loved. God, that would have been so nice to see that happen. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. And my final player, I debated on this between three guys. One of them was Ray Allen, but Ray Allen version we got was yeah. not Ray Allen. He won. He saved our ass, but that wasn't Ray Allen. I looked at Duncan Robinson because Duncan Robinson's resurgence this year has been absolutely amazing. Whatever therapist he talked to needs to put a billboard. I saved Duncan Robinson and become the athlete therapist because this guy's confidence went from here to here and back up to here. I mean, and his game has improved incredibly defensively. He's gotten better. His backdoor cuts to the rim. I mean, his passing has improved. I mean, everything about his game has improved. And he, and he's now a great shooter again. Like watching him shoot again is just beautiful. But I went with Glenn Rice. G Money, I I, I grew up on Glenn Rice. I uh, was my favorite player when I was a kid with, from watching the Heat. You know, I am 46 years old. So Glenn Rice, I remember when Glenn Rice won the national championship with Michigan in 89. Um, you know, so yeah, I, I, I'm a humongous Glenn Rice fan. 
people don't really seem to remember how good Glenn Rice was and what and the fact that, and, and this is when we talk about Hall of Fame stuff. When Manu Ginobili's in the Hall of Fame, but Glenn Rice is not, is a disgrace. And I don't think Glenn Rice is a Hall of Famer. And that's why I say stuff like Manu Ginobili in the Hall of Fame is a joke. Dennis Rodman in the Hall of Fame is a joke. Uh, uh, Draymond Green in the Hall of Fame is a joke. Glenn Rice is a better player than all those guys. He was, had a better career. He was the number one option for most of his career until he went to the Lakers and won a championship playing with Shaq and Kobe. And he was the third option. He averaged like 16, 17 points a game. He was their third leading scorer. But that guy was the number one option for most of his career. And he had a 26.8 per game season with the, with the Hornets. I mean, he had a, he had about five or six, seven straight seasons averaging 22 or, or, or more a game. I mean, he had a couple of 25, 26s in there. But Glenn Rice was that dude. And the fact that he gets so overlooked when all these other players in today's fluffy NBA – I mean, Glenn Rice in today's NBA, oh, my God, you have a field day. Shooting? My God. Th th and this is what I talk when I say shooting. When guys can't bang you running through the paint and running across the lane. Uh, Reggie Miller's talked about this many times. When you ran through the, through the lane, you get a forearm by a power forward who's not guarding you. It takes you off your line. It just takes you off. You can't do that anymore. I, I just think Glenn Rice, if, if, if you have guys like that in the Hall of Fame, he should be in the Hall of Fame. It didn't what? happen as often as y'all make it seem it happen. I say it didn't happen Talk about he, as often yeah. as y'all made it seem it happen. It didn't. No, it ha Reggie Miller said it happened all the time. That's the thing. Reggie Miller played. I mean, I didn't play. I can't speak Reggie, for him. But that's one person. That, but that's shooters. One person. That's one person. But no, it happened to shooters yes, all the time. more than one shoot on the court now. That's the difference. If, if, okay, if, if they're running, th what I'm saying is when they ran through the lane, people got bowed off the line all the time. You can't do that now. You're not allowed to. It's a foul. Cuts, split cuts, all type of different actions that's coming off the, the new regular basic. Motion. Okay. Steph Curry is 6'2, 180 pounds. If Steph Curry got forearm shivered the way these guys got in the, 90s would he be i think he'd be a great shooter i'm not saying he wouldn't be an amazing shooter still would he be the yes. same shooter yes you, you think so so when he's on his back and he can't he, remember he's lighter than a feather he's skinny as hell he would like you catch one of these every time through the through the lane i remember guys back then didn't wear body suits like they do now i mean i remember Dwayne Wade was wearing body pads and knee pads and thigh pads when you played basketball, did you wear freaking thigh pads and body yeah. rib pads? These guys, you didn't, and that was in college in 2007, yeah. 8, 9, 10. Dwayne Wade was wearing, knee, was wearing a body armor suit under his uniform when he played. It's crazy. And I know guys weren't wearing that shit in the 80s and 90s. But that would be my Steve, team. My coach Steve would be Kirk, Eric Spolster. Steve huh? Kirk could get up shots and, and things like that. I'm not saying they couldn't get up. Okay, I'm not saying they couldn't get up shots. And Steve Kerr wasn't running around in circles. He was spotting up. Different player. Think? I you mean, know that. eventually they're going to call a foul. You're just wilding out like that. You can't just do it all the time. You can get away with it. You know, act like it was out there playing. It was World War freaking three. When when the Knicks when the Knicks played the Pacers and and Reggie Miller hit eight points in fifteen seconds, did he yes. push off? Yes. Would that be called a foul today? I don't know. Often yes. they might get away with it. Still. Yes. Nah. Yes. Yes, it would. You can't get away with anything uh -oh, now. Get away with you can't. Things. You can't get away with. And you can't two hand you, shove you someone in like the back to where they fall on the like ground. Just what? And give a left hand, left left shoulder to somebody, and, get... and he got a fucking now an offensive one, foul called on him. That one was blatant. the one where he dri dribbled in that and pulled and turned. He didn't. He, he didn't throw it out though. He didn't use his hands. The... Reggie Miller two hands. No, the one was blatant that yeah. Jimmy Butler just did. Reggie Miller two hands shoved Greg Anthony yeah. in the back. That's why he was wide open. I mean, I was happy because I hated the Knicks, but um, they ended up losing that series anyhow. But that's my team. Coach is Eric Spolstra. I'm the assistant coach. I'm grabbing the water. I'm going to get a paycheck. And um, that's all I got for that team.